A very good morning to you all, that is the distinguished guests, government officials, as led by the minister, Dr. Blade Nzimande, and honorable premier, that is Mr. Oscar Mabuyane, Wusu council members, and all university governance structures, as led by advocate Mugai Tobi, Executive Management Committee, Senior Leadership Committee, Senators, Labor, students, and all guests that are in this venue, as led by Professor Rashiela Nolundi Sonwa. Welcome to this very important inauguration ceremony of our third chancellor at Walter Sisul University. The ceremony is about to start now, and so I would like to make a few announcements as follows. We do have restrooms or bathrooms on the far left of the auditorium, right at the back and just outside this venue. Please do make use of them, but only when it is absolutely necessary to do so, so as to minimize movement during the ceremony. We also have emergency doors at the front of the auditorium as well as at the back in case of emergency exit. Please be now requested to switch off your phones, otherwise put them on silent so as not to disturb the proceedings. When the academic procession emerges, we all shall be requested to stand to pay respect, and our beautiful choir over there will lead us in singing Unon Nause. When the academic procession leaves the venue after the ceremony, we again shall be requested to stand. For medical emergencies, we do have an ambulance service on site. Should you feel unwell, please indicate so that you can be assisted. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Sit back and enjoy the inauguration ceremony with us. Choir, I think it is time. Get yourselves ready. May we all stand as the procession is about to enter the hall. Thank you. Thank you. 
Powers vested in me as a vice chancellor and principal of Water Sicily University, I declare the ceremony of the inauguration of Ms. Nongkulule Gokobodo as chancellor of Water Sicily University open. Please be seated. I think one of the disadvantages of being Umfundis is that you are asked to be at the podium and a protocol of Ibambi. So, Mandi Ibambi is close and it's in Nanga. Nancy Bazai. Go back in Nanga, Yazaz. Nancy Bazazaz. We always, on occasions like this, invoke the spirit so if the choir can give me two verses Lisa Lisa and Bona Israel go away to I would be grateful and I ask Abantu Bemenginyao seated, I read Psalm 15, Indumi so yeshu milinye lineslanu, Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent, who may live on your holy mountain? The one whose walk is blameless, who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from the heart, whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to a neighbor and casts no slay on others who despises a vile person, but honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps an oath even when it hurts and does not change her mind, who lends money to the poor without interest, one who does not accept a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things will never be shaken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Over the last few months, I have been contemplating and praying over a wise, as the course are saying. I hinted at it when we were at Kunu on the 18th of July. And I thought, Mam Tembu, as you take this seat, I should, before I offer this prayer, repeat it. It ka izandla zabasengi zinomlaza imazi zenkomo ziyophusa cosa a difficult to translate when the hands of the milking men or people are filthy the milking cows dry, run dry. This is based on our history. When things were normal in the olden days, there were people who were chosen to milk the cows. It could be 15 cows, it could be five cows, it could be 25. And their duty was simple, to milk the cows and bring in the milk into the kitchen. Now because of the sensitivity of their duty to feed homes, they were usually expected to have a, more, a high moral control because it was feared that if their hands are filthy, it does not mean dirty from umshaba. Now, Sometimes, before we, before we conclude, there will be naughty milking boys and men who would milk the cow into their mouth. <laughs> and is it Elizabeth would shine, but the children of the home would be dirty and hungry. Sometimes, when they were big boys, they would even have their own color bushes. So the spirit of the Lord is saying to me, one of the serious problems we have in the country at the moment it's not that we are short of cows' resources. The greatest thing is that the hands of the milking cows is no less. And so, Gemam Tembu, as a spiritual leader, after I've offered a prayer, I would ask you to stand and you give me your two hands and I anoint you to run this institution. We, there are workshops about good governance and this and this and they waste money, they talk, they eat but the country will be so losing. <laughs> it is not about the cows. It is about those who have been given responsibility. Baba Ngaba saying, 
May this occasion remind all of us who are here. Uguti. It is against God's will. Ukusengelemlunyi. When the budget di pam guako, maingangi ni guwe. Milk and take the milk to the kitchen. Because oman kouti abakwazo zisugutia sitting room, a dining room. Kakuse tu aguti ni sili nubis. Kwenze kwenye nubis onkeni. Things have turned upside down. I think so Google twenty minutes. You just say into echo to guy. I wish you well. This along mom team could in in your genes could success. About Tembu, if you go to Uganda, if you don't know your story. If you go to Uganda, Apaku President Museveni, they will tell you that at one time Uganda was ruled in Gabatin. And they, they long for those days. Those were good days. I offer you, Gemta Nasekaya, all what I can. May this institution rise higher and higher. Mokrite Kubisima. <laughs> Let us pray. Go see. Sigelela i Africa. Malupaga me udumulwayo. Iva imi tandazo yetu. And so, Lord, as we gather at this place at this time, I ask that your spirit will prevail and hover over this occasion. May those who are going to give words, give words that energize, words of wisdom. Bless us. And so, Lord, I raise my hand that our chancellor will be in your hands day and night. Protect her from evil attacks. Protect her from sickness and death. May she continue to be revitalized by your spirit. May they change the world in your name. Sigelela University Zetuzoonke. Bless this country. Bless the leaders. Lord, bless Africa, bless the leaders, guide her children, in the name of Christ, amen. that you touch, multiply. Huh? Hallelujah. Sure. Amen. Thank you. Walter Cecilia University's philosophy is encapsulated in the vision, mission, purpose oh, statement, sorry. and Lost core values. The vision is to be an impactful, technology-infused African university. Through its core business, WSU responds to societal needs in ethical, scholarly, sustainable, and entrepreneurial ways and delivers future-ready graduates. In pursuit of excellence, Walter Sisulu University addresses societal challenges by producing relevant, innovative, and impactful research, championing sustainable and just development, and graduating versatile individuals. The university has approximately 30,000 students and 1,800 employees that study and work across four campuses. Enemtata, Butterworth, Buffalo City, and Ekoman. The university is uniquely positioned for impact 
by its location and its character as a comprehensive university. WSU is strategically located to respond to local and national development needs through its research, teaching and learning, and community engagement. In pursuit of excellence, Walter Sisulu University has realigned itself for improved quality and operational efficiency by rationalizing and consolidating its academic offering to seven faculties, namely Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences, Faculty of Natural Sciences, Faculty of Law, Humanities and Social Sciences, Faculty of Management and Public Administration Sciences, Faculty of Economics and Financial Sciences, Faculty of Education, Faculty of Engineering, Built Environment and Information Technology. With the realigned academic structure, the university will realize its objectives of consolidating academic talent for enhanced quality of teaching and learning, reduced duplication and better program delivery, cost saving and maximization of cost efficiency, improved oversight and monitoring, enhanced academic student support. Walter Sisulu University has traversed a journey anchored by relentless pursuit of excellence. This has led the university to achieve remarkable milestones in the past few years with visionary leadership, strong commitment, strategic collaborations, upskilled and dedicated workforce. WSU has risen to new heights never experienced before. Some of the major achievements are increase of NRF rated researchers who are recognized as leaders in their fields of expertise and are affirmed by the National Research Foundation for constantly producing high quality research outputs. Successfully completing major construction and refurbishments across the four campuses. Exponential growth in staff members with masters and PhDs to ensure quality learning and teaching. These positive strides towards excellence are testament to the dedication, resilience and visionary spirit that define WSU's identity. In April 2023, the University Council appointed Ms. Nongululeko Koboto as Chancellor, follows in the footsteps of a gallant anti-apartheid activist, Dr. Sheila Sisulu. With Chancellor Koboto, a strong management team led by Professor Rushila Nolundi Songa and a host of illustrious industry leaders who sit in the University Council led by advocate Tembeka Ngaitob, their collective wisdom and passion will take the University to greater success. Walter Sisulu University, a university in pursuit of excellence. Mandis Bullisel Umfundis, Ute Tayet Kriva, Wakupa oil. I'm troubling and born in a better one. Wakupi oil, Wakabi's answer, the Chancellor with Tom. I got Kabeza. I got Kaban office, Siloa, and I call by Andy Anderson. I was there and don't know. I funer and I'm getting oil. Was the bandit was who sang a rag? Was good to all they all sang. Tiabon, a mum team. Tiabon, but Tina Mambo, the Mizen. See now again, air to oil. Says our new Vimba, the food. Um, Kuko get it list up a good to a protocol greeting list. Um, I don't think Putimanamela is here, so I can skip him. Uh, but the Deputy Director General of Higher Education, Dr. Masia Sogtigwa, and your delegation from the ministry. Um, there is also a Justice of the Constitutional Court, uh, Justice Mbuisenu Matlanga, who is an alumni of uh, Walter Sasulu University. I want to slide it up. So, could be judge as a concord. 
Kube ko no no kumka and damasa kan damas. That's about figure the now kumka. O figure no kumka. Karo ka o kumka ne ko na befan mas bon angen bonge. Mas kai bon angen bonge. So ina bu sesa gen o kumka. Kube ko nam ke ando sos beza gen na. All the guys and the husband, they go say hello. We punga. Eli kokele. Masugo ke between. Ogu pata na ukokele. Ako na banda ba pete indo zonto nzim. Indo zonto nzim. Tina skokele. Big difference. Nengunu nuya skolo. U professor songa. Don't be a summer bundle, I'm saying to get a nature on a gag. Um, in got to no second last speaker, Doga Koboshian, and get a chair at the corner again. I Sabuli Sam Dongo. No MSC was in Fundo in Doga Gad. No mayor. Where's the street? Umondwan. Kutwa gano mea wa say King Sabata. Ulapa na ye. U councilor Nelan. Na banye kaba pete yo kwe industry. Tinake. Aba banba pete yo. Basta la apa kuti kwe council. Asbaboni jeye kute. Snendo zofu zile. Ez lapa kwa lapa kuti kwe council. Nendo zo Dr. Tebele, ruya ziwa ke ngalam tumbu wake. Tizu uteta kwa utinu mtumbu wake. Kwa wadwa uya ziwa. Nendo zo chakhan. Sazi suga kwa SAA. Zipete ke wadwa apos pete kwa. Palapa kwa council ke. Ne convocation ye tu ke. U Dr. Mandashe u kokele ke pa. Sige sabona ke. Let's go back to school. Um, now my lungo own care council. If we are going to let's manage to emphasize council type one. If we acknowledge, that's why in Dubai now we try to fulfill it. Now, but show staff. Now, but fund is students. There is no university actually without our lecturers, without our doctors and professors, less so without our students. Unit required, I don't know why I say unit required, but what do you do in Cameroon? Okay, I get it. You need to feel 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 it. Umamel, this it has been approved. So, so, manen, nani manenegas, and now we get man tempo. Miss Nongolule go kobod, jengo transfer away to Ongenai. So it is my greatest honor to welcome everyone today. I have great memories of this university. Even this very auditorium. Um, I used to attend many meetings here as a leader of the students. We are extremely proud, uh, Madam Chancellor, that Ungumdana Omguba, you are the daughter of the soil. Ungumamteim, Ungolom Sila, Uyem Yem, City Ungokute, yes, I can develop and go, and this will help me develop and now. Not only are you a product of the region, you are also a product of this university. There is something salutary in the fact that your university was established at a particular time and for a particular purpose. Yet in more than 40 years of its existence, this university has outgrown its original mission of educating a civil service 
for the Transkei Bantu stem. It has defied the trappings of apartheid to become a central voice in the higher education sector in South Africa. We might then ask ourselves how this was possible. How has it been possible for a university created to serve apartheid, instead to serve a new South Africa, which is the antithesis of apartheid? And one of the ways how this university has achieved this has been the simple reality that when the new South Africa was born, it did not have a bureaucracy of its own. It had to depend on the graduates of black universities to serve the goals of the new South Africa. Indeed, our own graduates are in local government, in provincial government, and in the national sphere of government. Some of them are in other branches, in the provincial legislature, in the national parliament, and indeed in the judiciary. But these have not been the only spheres, in other words, the public sphere, that we have seen the presence of our graduates. We have also seen our graduates in the professions. Take, for instance, the legal profession, the medical profession. But today we are inaugurating someone truly special. And when we use the word trailblazer, we usually do so lightly and perhaps without reflection. But this morning we have a real trailblazer. The accounting profession is not an easy profession to enter today in 2023. Many black aspirant chartered accountants struggle to gain entry and when they have entered, indeed, to make progress upwards. And now to place this in perspective, when you consider that you, Madam Chancellor, became a chartered accountant in 1987, at the height of apartheid, it becomes truly remarkable what you achieved. Given the structural barriers that you have faced, it is a great achievement that you became a chartered accountant in the first place. That you were the first African female to do so in a world dominated by white males fills us as the leaders of this university with a lot of pride. We are therefore honored that you were able to accept our invitation to be the titular head of this university. We trust that your mere presence will be enough to show our students that their current circumstances should not determine their future. That they are also able to rise to the very top of their chosen, chosen professions. And that it is okay to have big dreams and that the future is for them to make. And there is something meaningful in the word inspiration. When I was a student, I did not know what would become of my own future. Indeed, I had no idea that a person who looked like me, came from my own background, could even make it in life. I had never seen a lawyer. No doubt many of us who want to be doctors have never seen a doctor or a CEO or, for that matter, a chartered accountant who speaks their own language, who eats the same food as us, and who looks like us, who has the same hair as us. But today when I look at our incoming vice chancellor, I can say with some pride that I have someone who just looks like me. I have someone that I could have aspired to become when I was a child. And so many of us and many of our students who are in accounting and other professions can look at you, Madam Chancellor, and say they too want to be like you. So Wusu is proud to have been blessed by your presence and your acceptance of the honor. We are also proud to have been blessed by the presence of top national and provincial leaders. The university aspires to continue playing a developmental role in our country. 
We want to contribute to the reconstruction of this country from the ashes of apartheid. We know that it has not been an easy job to rebuild this country from apartheid. In fact, it is an understatement to say this has been a challenging task. What we need is a new class of mandarins, a class of highly skilled, highly educated, but deeply committed to the idea of South Africa, young and new graduates. We are, as a country, experiencing signals of social, political, and economic disintegration. We have high rates of youth unemployment. We have an astonishing level of crime. We have a high level of embedded structural inequality and poverty. And our region, the former Transkei, which is where our head office is located, is one of the first affected by the challenges of crime, unemployment, and inequality. So that means our challenge is vast. But your example, Madam Chancellor, has shown us that the answer is not to throw our hands in the air at the depth of the problem. The answer is to confront the problem slowly. The answer is to confront the challenges with dedication. The answer is to confront the challenge with patience. But we should be armed with the weapon of education. So Namtanjeke City Wunchu Kuwe Madam Chancellor. Siti siyabulela keli lunda usnige lona loko kubana ukwazi ukuthatha esi sihlalo sithi ke baninzi abafuna ukufana nawe sithi ngobukho bakho baza kuyibona into kokubana ayiyonto inzima ukufana nawe sithi ubukho bakho kule university kusipha ilunda kunja nje Kwenza ukubana siyazi into ukubana nathi ngenye mini sauntinga sifane nentaka tyabulela um i didn't know that this uh, fellow advocate muheto is taller than me i've just discovered Sadly, um, I could just conveniently say I, I rise on the protocols that uh, he went through, but uh, I think that uh, it would be good, Chairman of Council, to add where you left off uh, but pick a few people that you also acknowledge, not because I think that those that I will not repeat are not uh, as important, but we've got to save time. Um, and in my case, then, I will start by acknowledging you because you couldn't acknowledge yourself, Advocate uh, uh, Tembeka, not Tembeka. <laughs> it's not forgivable when it's mispronounced here. Maybe in Joburg they can call him Tembeg, which feminizes the name. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, he could just have been a good female. But Tembeg and Nugai Tobi, the VC, Unko Sundamas and Damasu, they were figure between. Oh, I got figure, I see she had gone down. Kukoke Abanya Bandwap that I thought it would be good to also acknowledge as a advocate. Umfundis rooms like a little bit, we say stand as a legal man to Dr. Mbet. The abona papaka to abant, kukona abalinga nebake u u chancellor we to loom cha. The abona banyan the gababiz and amagam and don't lose the answer on the banins. Usa polake lulap. Jonga Pandial born, Umdung Umdungaband, 
I'm sure when I cry and I bo guy. In cocaine, guess of politics, born them to a cobosia. A pack a pack at the way to Betuna, Sine Inwell, in Sika, a principal yam, a professor, Uncle Nokoska's work. Nay, and the Timandim acknowledge on behalf of here to song here. Pagamelinda will introduce her umam team. Dim introduce and the guide by something that was written for me. If it has got flaws, because she's, she's very well known here, don't blame it on me. I will tell you when I say my bits and I'll get them right. Usis um, Nonkulego Gobodo is the CEO of Awakened Global, a social initiative. She is the former chairman and founder of Sizwe Taluba Kobodo, now known as SNG Grant Thornton, the largest, the largest black auditing and accounting firm in SA. Next time when you really want to clap, go for it. <laughs> Thank you. As uh, the chairman of council had said, she's the first African woman to qualify as a chartered accountant in SA, as far back as in 1987. She is an author of a book, Awakened to the True Self, to my true self, pardon me, which was launched in October 2022. In 2011, she played a key role as one of the leaders in the successful merger of Kobodo Incorporated and Sizwen Saluba to form Sizwen Saluba Kobodo, which later, of course, merged with Grant Thornton. This was a monumental advancement that changed the landscape of accounting profession, of the accounting profession, forgive me, uh, in South Africa, ushering in a new era of economic transformation. Since Nongulu Lego started her career as a junior lecturer here at WUSU, formerly known as uh, University of Transkai, in 1984, she proceeded to begin her training as an accountant with KPMG in the Mtata office. Subsequently, she joined the Transkai Development Corporation, TDC Law and Airbus, as the CFO. In 1992, she established her own accounting practice in Mtata, in the Eastern Cape, where, by the way, several accountants that you might have met in your life got trained, had a chance to be, qual to be trained uh, to qualify as CAs too. She expanded the practice in 1996 to form Kobodo Incorporated, which had offices in other cities in South Africa. She serves on the boards of PPC Limited and ShopRite Holdings, which are listed on the JSE, and Lisaka Technologies, which is listed on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange, and was appointed, as all of you know, as the Chancellor of WUSU in April this year. Her career has been the subject of case studies by the Business School of the University of Witwatersrand in SA, Nelson Mandela University, and Lincoln University in New Zealand. She has received the following awards. Forbes Woman Africa Business Woman Award by Forbes Africa in 2023. Uh, on this one, maybe you can wait for me to finish. <laughs> Forgive me. Platinum Award at the BBQ Awards in 2016. Pioneering Entrepreneur Award by the Black Business Council in 2016. Lifetime Achievement Award Excellency in Accountancy at the SA Professional Services Awards in 2014, Outstanding Woman in Business and Award at the BBQ Awards in 2014, Businesswoman of the Year 
at the Standard Bank Top Women Awards in 2014. You might be tempted to clap, but don't. <laughs> Lifetime Achievement Award by Abasa in 2011. Woman of Substance Award by the African Women Chartered Accountants in 2010. I, I thought you could be true because if you look at the program I have, people have got time allocations. I happen to be the only person, just one, who was not given time allocation. I think they did their research about me. I worked with politicians, the one thing we can do is talk. I'm also a teacher, so I used to be paid to talk. Uh, but I thought I would say one or two things about, and, 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 and I won't be long. Lomtu and the intro Gusapagun, into umbi, yom kuba, into umbi, yom tonyam, gumtu walap. Gumtu walap. Now, you are becoming tribalistic or regionalistic, something like that. But, Kulendu and Nainda, one of Bukago, the elite look all over and eat at Kuba, Kuba. Ah, siza unga bina kai ya tina. Ta siza unga teti, gelo kai ya leitu. Ta sinalo. Kubani kebe tuna oza utetangalo. So that, as teti kuba stala kupela, no talo kusinako. But si teta because si senze ndoba. Ah, baba ntuba ngingi ntuba bona yo ba shepa. If you try abo esanga pambwa. It's within their reach. It's achievable. If as far back as, as 1987, before many of you at the back there were born, someone, a black woman, in apartheid South Africa, leave this little corner that existed as a funny country, but 19, 1987, Someone could aspire to and pursue a dream of becoming a chartered accountant. No, I mean, William Funar and the Sugan Tetem, I'm telling you. The Tetem Velas. We are born? A way. Funar, I see if we are able to not abandon bait, the South Pumele, Lababu, Yabeza. I'm I'm so good at it. We counsel. Because the problem is the end of the land. The land 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 is the end the land. The the Kala freedom of expression at the constitution. This is embarrassed. We are born. The consequence then, we are going to be associated with one another. See, I believe like I'm telling you, we are going by Chancellor With all the impeccable credentials that you have built over years, you are prepared to come back and plow back and be associated with the institution. Se kunye apa se zaubamba nange zange sake le university. Yeah, yeah. Send a
Person of Council, I wish to confirm that all the provisions of the Act and Statute with regard to the appointment of Chancellor have been followed to the latter. And that Ms. Nunkule Kokobodo is duly appointed as Chancellor of Walter Sisulu University. By virtue of the powers vested in me, I request the University Registrar to robe and present the Chancellor. Oh, 
wala tell party no mu ama to loya afa nkit o to ke ti na si zalo struggle si a lot to dong ma kwe kwe be ni tunya ma sente o to amogo tin we are not dong we can come my pg is not come e be mbi isolo be ya kin na mtanje ifuki isolo ibi nte na mtanje imbi umzansi subone zante nzeni I saw I of counsel, I present the Chancellor to you. By, by virtue of the authority entrusted in me, I have the honor to invite the Chancellor to read the inauguration oath of office. I, Nongululeko Koboto, solemnly declare that I will faithfully carry out my duties as Chancellor of Walter Sisulu University as prescribed in the statute. So help me God. By virtue of the authority entrusted to me, I declare Ms. Nongkulule Kokobodo inaugurated as the third chancellor of the Walter Sisulu University. Congratulations. So, we got in what he 
ukuzama sela kwazo kuwagatha ngayibimali yafunga le ntombi yathi if a man can take a position even a woman can take the same position yakathula Okobo professor Nkuhlu ngokuqala emathotheni dawuba ngokuqala abafazini uba ICA Yaphuma le ntombi yasithi ga isifuba yaqala isifombo sibale kugcinywa Yemka yayovula indawo ekuthwa yaba phicothi bencwadi siyayaz kwakuthwa inzaluba endi nzaluba endi nzaluba endi nzaluba endi nzaluba yathikotha le ntombi ncwadi bathe abantu abahlimali baphakwa kuphuma bani kaloku kwezi yule university basuka apha kaloku thathi president ndithetha ngobani kanithetha ngamadoda amakhulu asiphikothi somthetho into somahlanga into sombenenge nabanye nabanye i can mention all of them but because of a time i can do nothing we are here today sizothi mbali yaphinda phindwa kaloku umtano osalelwa apha umbona uvela amagqaba bemabini aba mahlano amagqabi kuvela isikhwebu akuqale ngovela isikhwebu uqale kuvela lento ukuthwa ngumphuhu siyophuleke thi na makhwenkwe siwuhle zivela inkoso sidlama ngamza avela amathango omgila sidlama polo ithanga elaziwa ngoba ngucotho alidliwa njenge polo lo sisixhwebo sombona esithe sahluma sangumbona ombovu kule ndawo vumani bafazi nditho ndithi malibongwe tanqotho kamhlekazi i was sick and tired during the time Some boy told me that the former university of France is going to close. Abuza ni phima ntomba zane benifunda apha nje namhla siyavuya kuthi wa intombe soba ichansela. I don't even know what is the meaning of chancela but I want to know that. Kodi ndendi yazi yomntanam Unkuhlu u professor Wiseman wathula umncwazi phezulu kwenhloko yakho wakubhula wakubhula what today you are qualified chartered accountant today you are going to pull another people today uzungetheke emntanam ubaqalele kwezi university ubabise ku university of natala ubabise ku university kwasomgathethikeni ubabise ku university yase south africa uzibise zonke professor uthi mama ke bandithe isidanga sibe sinye nami ke ndiphulwe nguwe mtandini ndiyazigalela nina nisindi ekhaleni ambani ningemi ladies and gentlemen allow me tell you the last thing without education you go nowhere education is a spear to open any door close yekani kusela utjwala xa ni se university nithe nihlale ibinyaka bengaphezulu kwesiqhenxe ngokungathi nizofundela ubugqirha kodwa nizokwenza nthi diploma because you forgot about what you are coming to do masiyembo masiyembo mamthembo Tukela bafane mlamba uwelwa uwelwa sizizwe sikhulu gazili akaka kwimpundulo sabathakathi nonqukuthuzi yamcekisa sakumhla sithabela uDongini flexibility responsibility of the community community builder 
community development todi neno mlo mfam fam ngathi sisiponzi todi neno buso butamtam ngathi simpundu somntwana bezalwe zolo kasi liyakaka kwimpundu luzabathakathi we know that you are going to take this university from down to up as you understand that ikamala makoskasi ikhokhelwa ngumfazi le university namhla ichansela nguwe itwedza le into mangiphinde kuhlala omnye umfazi kule ndawo akeme kancinci amadoda awuphinde akhokhele ngeqesha layo tegam tenjojololo tayikhokho ai dai bon Eh bona ke inje ke into yamaxhosa Inauguration into yesilungu Wansi ufaka amaxhosa kubanje Kuba bekufana manje say apho kudala 10 minutes ago Dizo ubiza uma mthembi baza uthetha nathi Into nayo ke nje ngoba nami ke ngumntana omqhu nje ayazi ba imbongi xa seyiphetha umbongo awungeni ndawo Tuluti tago kuba iyawujika imbongo le ithethe ngawo So so vala umlomo if you know what's good for you kodwa ke sese siyangasegqibeleni eh ibhalwe ngesilungu ke le part kodwa ke ndizake ndithethe ngesixhosa eh le ifuna kanje yenzile ndinethemba ke ndoba register iza uba compliant with the statute eh ndinelunda lokubiza u chancellor wethu omtsha azothetha nathi kwesi sihlangalala formal uh, speech betuna eh nyanga yo mama le nami ndingumama ndifuna ke into ejusa abantwana bami i was 34 when i divorced with three young kids ngabakhulisa ndodwa balapha ngokubadala nabazukulwana babo zababiza ngamagama nemnyamezelo eh ugcine ikhaya bathi ngokukhaya o ngipha kodwa ke ngugcine ikhaya pha ikhaya ncela phaka yima 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 nkagcini Eh uh, we MD of wealth but he has an old mutual when I learned to investment banking Ungutata ke abantwana babini umasa phaka amamasa no crazy phaka ama crazy ngathala phansi ke alandelwe ngucule phakama ucule only girl only girl she's the creative one ke pha ekhaya eh owenze into se film singathi understand you thing urana i company ekuthwa ngu brain for conscious creatives Uchati leke, no Quintin, wala paka mu Quintin. Banom tana oi wan, ongu mu malibong, wala paka mu malibong, we. Ntombi amke, ebyo 
yona yodwa bethuna ningahlala phansi ogqibela ke ngumnweba cela phaka ngumnweba ongumzayiko ngumzayiko ngumzayiko umnweba ke yena wenze ilolo ligqwetha kodwa ke aka pretizi urana ikampani yakhe ethwa ngu ENT Minerals benze into sikhumshela ukuthwa si mineral trading tingazi understand ikakuhle nami ngahlala phansi mnweba as we celebrate women's month let's think about all those single women who are raising children alone like i've done The Deputy Director General of Higher Education and Science and Innovation, Dr. Masia Sotrikwa, and the delegation from the Ministry. His Royal Highness, and then whatever corner, King Dabase and Dabase. Oh, corner, okay. Kosikazi, no Siswe, no Lucindi, some Tiraka, and all traditional leaders present here today. Chairperson of Council, Advocate Tembeka Nukaindobi, and all council members present today. The Vice Chancellor and Principal, Professor Roshila Nolundi Songa, and all university management. Deputy Speaker of the Eastern Cape Provincial Legislature, Honorable Koboshiane. MEC of Education in the Eastern Cape, Mr. Gadi, Executive Mayor of OR Tambo District Municipality, Councillor Mondwana, Mondwana, sorry, Mandi, Mr. Gaku, Executive Mayor of King Sabata Dalinjebo, Councillor Nelan, Captains of Industry and CEOs, Walter Sisulu, uh, University Convocation, Walter Sisulu, University staff and students, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I acknowledge uh, Professor Nkutlu, Nongoska Zwake, Amazon Kunga, Apa Namslanje, Nabantu Abasuga, Esaika, Bakona, Nabona Mslanje, yes. Thank you so much for, for coming. There's trouble I'm so onke as a call you. The bullet la come to onke or call you also kunga today. Also support us Walter Sisulu and the meaning of kunga. Yet. I'm really deeply honoured. I'm really deeply honoured and blessed to. <coughs> appointed the Chancellor of my alma mater. Um, you, you can't even express the, the kinds of feelings that you have about this appointment. But at Kobelen, I thought, if I'm even going Life works in very strange ways, actually, in, in <laughs> cycles that are very strange. Because I was a student here doing my BCom degree. You know, a student just trying to figure out life hoping that my education will transform my life and open doors for me in the world. And then, after I completed my BCom, I was approached by the Department of Accounting um, to come and serve as a junior lecturer. Because Professor Ryan, who was the head of department of the accounting department, was going on sabbatical. I, I took up the opportunity, because I wanted to have a second baby. That's what I didn't mean. 
serving here as a junior lecturer at that young age, I didn't even have a, a, a senior degree of any kind. I was really honored by that. And it really opened my mind being among intellectuals. Um, you know, just introducing you to this world of academia and just building you um, as, a, as a professional. I, al I always, um, always credit it for all the successes that I've had, that rebuilding that I got when I was very young. So I served full time for two years and then for 18 months I was a lecturer part time. And I always feel less guilty, Prof. Ngul, that I didn't continue to uh, develop chartered accountants at an academic level because I served my time. But I do, of course, continue to contribute to the pipeline of black chartered accountants uh, in other ways. So when I started articles, I was a more mature professional. I was not like your average uh, first year trainee. As a result, I got promoted very young because of that grooming that I got when I was here. I've had the privilege of being part of the WUSU graduations in May. That gave me the first experience of the university and its culture. For me, culture is very important because if there's no cultural fit, you're not going to be happy in that place, whatever it is. But I was pleasantly surprised. I received a warm welcome from everyone. You could have thought that I had been part of this university for a long time. And then during the procession, uh, the procession song was no mousing. It felt like I was in an African university, not a Oxford somewhere in England. And then I listened to the speeches of both the students and the, the academics who spoke, and I was comfortable that there's an alignment of vision here. And then I knew that God had brought me to the right institution. I'm still going through an in-depth induction process, but the few discussions I've had with some of the people within the university and the documents that I've read gave me assurance that there is a clear vision and mission here. The new strategy is very clear, giving direction to the university. I'm always impressed by a new leader who comes in and makes her own assessment of where the institution is and then leads the development of a new strategy that will take the institution to the next level. The strategy talks about rationalizing faculties and consolidating programs and allocating them uh, among the four campuses. Also has gone through many changes over the years. This started with the merger of the University of Transkei, the Border Technicon, and the Eastern Cape Technicon. Having gone through a major myself, I can just imagine the kind of challenges that they went through. Merging a traditional academic university with Technicon. Besides the differences in offerings and levels, there is another element, uh, which is the different cultures that must be merged into one culture. We all know that majors fail because of um, cultural differences. But they've had an opportunity to go through the pain of integration. This indeed is the right time to rationalize and consolidate. Change is never easy because it's difficult. It's resisted. Um, but the process has to be managed well with proper change management interventions being an integral part of the whole process. I can certainly bring my experience to bear to assist the university in this regard. But my most exciting part is the vision. The vision is an impactful 
technology-infused African university. Wow. This could not have, uh, they could not have come up with a more relevant and befitting vision for Africa and this new world of the fourth industrial revolution. The, the strategy articulates what all the elements of the vision stand for. A vision is a very powerful thing. It gives direction, it shapes everything about the institution. I've already had a little bit of experience uh, around the African and part during the graduation but I will delve more on the technology element and gain more understanding of the strategy during my induction. When you look at where South Africa is today and where the rest of the continent is, you realize that it is time for a great change if we are to realize the dreams that we have as Afri Africans when we had um, saw the end of colonialization. Education is one of those areas that need change. There's been a big cry for this change, even from students, uh, as we can see from the movements in recent years. We need um, universities to be an anchor of the renewal of the continent. We need a wusu that is going to impact the communities around it and the rest of the country. That, to me, is what all uh, it's, it's about. In fact, when we talk about impact, that's what it's about. I always say that academic institutions are sitting with all the research that we need to change society. Then academics have this great debate among themselves uh, when there should be centers of knowledge for society. They're just enjoying their own party. But we can see now that there's a change uh, in engaging with the community from what I've heard when I was here. The quality of students being produced should indeed be in a position to contribute to the Africa Renewal Project. I saw for myself during the graduation that the majority of students come from poor backgrounds. There's an urgent need to address the problem of social inequality in South Africa. Elements. The strategy of WUSU seeks to ensure that their students reach the higher oh, echelons. <laughs> oh, yes, okay, thank you. Sorry. Um, the, the strategy of WUSU seeks to ensure that their students reach the highest echelons of society. We want to see black universities restored to their former glory of producing leaders for the continent as we've seen in the past. I was really blessed to see a sea of graduates who are majority black graduating when I was here. That gave me real big hope for the transformation of our country. Education is the only real lever we have to transform South Africa. But we also see a sad trend of graduates sitting at home for years and not finding jobs. And for me, it doesn't make sense that graduates can sit at home together with those who have no education. That says to me, VC, there's something really wrong with our education system. If graduates can't come up with ideas like start a business or do something with their lives, we have to look into that. I see myself fitting very well with the vision of WUSU and the new strategy, and I can contribute a lot in realizing the vision and the strategy. I also hope to be an inspiration to our graduates who can realize that they can also achieve their own dreams. One of the roles that I see playing uh, is to support the vice chancellor. We have a situation in South Africa where women leaders are facing a lot of challenges. They work in environments that are hostile to them. They are expected to succeed while they are being undermined and challenged at every turn. Women deserve to be given space to lead like everyone else. And I'm not suggesting that we tolerate poor leadership from anyone, whether it were a man or a woman, the cost of poor leadership is high. 
but there is a definite unfair treatment of female leaders. The VC has a very big vision. The university has a very big vision. She should be allowed to implement it and leave the kind of le legacy she would like to see uh, leaving, leaving behind one day. I've spoken about this Africa Renewal Project. This is a passion of mine. When we saw the end of colonialism and apartheid, we had great hope that we we're going to see social and economic transformation of the people of Africa. That hope has not been realized. Ghana was the first one to obtain liberation, and that was 60 years ago. Africa has been stuck since then. They have just not been able to realize this vision of economic transformation and social transformation in, in all of these 60 years. And I always wonder, why is that? Why are we not able to achieve this vision? And then I started to study projects of social change over the ages. And I realized that they are not straightforward, you know? They, they, they happen in, in phases. So the end of colonialism was just the first phase, in my view. So I studied uh, in the academic institution, yeah. <laughs> if not, I'm very careful. I, but I studied some of these social changes, especially the ones around the 17th and the 18th century, like the end of the monarchy system, feudalism, the birth of science, those inventions that started and ushered industrial revolution. They happened over decades and phases. Even the Industrial Revolution went through over a century. The second Industrial Revolution started after the end of a century. So, um, indeed, I realized that we're mistaken to just believe that there will be sudden change just because we've ended colonialism. But we all know that we need something new. We need to change the social and economic situation in South Africa and, the, and, and, the, and Africa generally. There's also this agitation around the world, not just in Africa, to end racial and gender inequality. Freedom comes with responsibility. How do we then take forward this freedom to the next level? In my view, Africans themselves are the only ones who can usher in a new era and take freedom to the next level. And whenever I think of this, I ask myself, so I worry. How do people who have been conditioned to believe that they are inferior and, incapab and, and incapable bring about this something new? We really need to rethink the, our approach to social transformation. So when we complain about the slow pace of transformation, who are we complaining to? Who are we expecting to champion this social and economic transformation of our people. We know the story of the Africana, that they were poor, they lived in slums, they also had a low social status in society, the English didn't respect them, but they didn't complain. They championed their own transformation. When you look at them today, you forget that history. So I have hope that we also can champion our own transformation. We know that there are myths that were created about black people, that they are inferior, weak, incapable, lazy, and all the things that were said. We all know that we, myths are not true, ne? they are not real. Um, before 1652, when all these things started, Africans were living here, normally they never saw themselves as black and inferior. There was no issue of white people who were superior 
to them what I call the illusion of blackness. The truth of the matter is that we are all conditioned black and white by the society in which we grew up. This generation, black and white, have never seen anything normal. We don't know what normal looks like. So when we talk about creating something new, we're talking about creating something that we've never seen before. But the winds of change are blowing. And when they start blowing, when that fire of change is lit, you can never stop it. It can be resisted, there could be wars, it could take a long time to achieve, but you cannot stop that fire. Look, where is feudalism? Where is slavery? Where is colonialism? So these winds of change that are blowing, no one is gonna stop them. But how are we going to respond to these winds of change? Are we going to watch and just see maybe they land somewhere? Or are we going to engage with it and direct this wind so that it lands where we have determined? The people of Europe engaged with the winds of change. <coughs> They did not just let them blow and land wherever, you know. But of course, I mean, I'm very clear in my mind that these winds of change uh, are not just directed <coughs> by human beings only. God is very much behind them all. It is time that black people own and lead their own social and economic transformation. No one is going to do this for them. The way I see this, guys, is that, so this to say, guys, <laughs> this is a university. <laughs> I'm a natural speaker. Hey, you wanna be taking then go and be taking. <laughs> if you take South Africa, for instance, it is only the middle class and the educated class, both black and white, who are our only hope to drive change. But right now, they don't see this as being their role. They are very comfortable. You know, they have a seat at the table, um, they're sharing in the piece of the pie. But the truth of the matter is that they are not really free. Because there's this stereotype of black person and you are expected to fit into that stereotype. And when you don't, there's backlash. So what do they do? They choose to abandon themselves in most cases. Because they need the job. It's that human need, you know, for safety and security. But I want to remind you about the story of Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. That country also had its middle class, but when this country started to deteriorate, they left. They are now part of the diaspora. They left their beautiful homes and cars back there. We are seeing our own country going the same direction. If we don't wake up, we are going to leave those beautiful homes and those beautiful cars behind and be all over the world like everybody else in the continent. That is the truth. There's already a brain drain happening in South Africa already. So for me, South Africa has come to a crossroads. Are we going to continue to disengage? Are we going to allow our country to go the way of the rest of the continent? Or are we going to wake up fold our sleeves and get on with the job of saving our country. Again, universities are also a major lever for this social change. Social scientists say that education determines the social security, social rank, and the extent of social consumption. There cannot be any major social change without education. Education gives people a chance towards social mobility. 
So black people must take the responsibility of releasing themselves from the limiting beliefs that have been socialized by society. We've been talking about releasing ourselves from slave mentality for many years as Africans. What is stopping us from doing it? Black people must start that long journey towards finding their true selves. And they cannot find their own creativity and create a new world for themselves without finding who they truly are. Until we appreciate the dangers of a conditioned mind, we will not try to deal with it. When you are conditioned, you accept whatever the idea is as truth and reality. You do not question it, you act and behave according to the idea. And we are conditioned and socialized by many human systems. Culture, tradition, religion, colonialism, racism, patriarchy, and inner self-talk, those things that you say to yourself, they shape your reality. So when I go back and look at that social change of the 17th and 18th century, those people who are said to be peasants, you know, who were locked in what they called estates in, in which you were born, because the society was divided into various class strata. So if you were born into that strata, you, stratum, you couldn't move out of there. You couldn't move to a higher level. But those peasants are the ones who drove the social, social change of that time. And they became politicians, scientists, industrialists who ushered in the Industrial Revolution. They could not do that when they believed what society had conditioned them to believe about themselves. Because they also believed that they were inferior, they were poor, they were not sophisticated like the aristocracy of the time. So when black people and women, I must add women here, are released from a conditioned mind, and the only way to do this is to uncondition the mind. You can imagine the kind of creativity we're going to see that will usher in this Africa we hope for. We need everybody to participate in this project of the Africa Renewal and the end of racial and gender inequality. A whole new world is waiting for us on the other side, as we've seen in history. You know, as, as I end, as black accountants, we had this deep sense of self-determination. We were very clear that we started very hard. We qualified, we are chartered accountants like everybody else, and we deserve a stake. And we came together, formed the ambassadors of this world, and formed what was called the, the, the Practitioners Forum. And we used to you know, come together and plan how we're going to advance ourselves um, as, as accountants, because why should we be in the fringes of the economy of our own country? And that was the driving force of not allowing a system to tell us who we are and where we belong and how far we can go, which is why accountants, among all the, of these professions, is the one that has achieved most because we're very clear about who we are. And I'll leave you with that. And thank you to people like Professor Mkutlu who showed us, I mean, but why we could dream those dreams is because there were those trailblazers who showed us that it could be done. Thank you very much, bro, for always being um, the kind of leader that South Africa needs right now, who is always leading from the front, even right now. Thank you very much.
President, how do you live where we are dead? Motion go breakfast. Three minutes, sir. Please. Oh, thanks very much. No, I have a program, Reg. Uh, it states that the choir is Othula, therefore, and uh, Paga. So uh, I was expecting a Lea choir because Namdan Ginda to the junior and high school. I was leading the songs there. But yeah, I took a sharp cave to join a politics because we are living in a country where we are led by politicians. So that's why I chose not to continue with this thing of music. It's good, it's for other people. <laughs> uh, I'm happy that I'm given this opportunity just to send a congratulatory message to our new chancellor. Uh, I think they organized this event strategically so because Inyanga Yamanin, uh, the university vice chancellor is also in. in. I, Mapongomas, call as the president of Walter Sisul University. The Azal was Sunday, the 13th of August. Kulinyanga Yamanina. Even the Secretary General of the ISRC, Nayo Yazal and Alinyanga Yamanina, the 12. So, Sialan <laughs> Dililan. Uh, no, uh, I, I like to say thanks to everyone. Uh, because if you look at uh, the history, Amanina are doing well, even as we speak, Amanina smell by the country. I agree, knock out stages for the first time. That is why there is this organization that always says Amanina must get equal amount that. Because currently, Bafana Bafana is doing nothing but Amanina's mail. That's an honest reality. It's out there. So I'm happy to see Amanina a cool. Uh, even myself, I'm coming from an organization that simply says Amanina must be on top. Indeed, in all Tassisul universities, women are on top. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I won't dwell much. Uh, a lot has been said. I'm only allocated three minutes. I think I've already exhausted my time. I would like to say uh, to the new chancellor, please uh, lead this university with integrity. Uh, currently, we are just uh, doing well. Because remember, ever since I came here in 2019, uh, there's been a publishment by the media houses bad things about this university. I so wish they can come back again and say positive things about this university. <laughs> Yesterday we had a, a workshop. Uh, there was a question that was raised there when uh, there was a professor who was presiding over who said uh, the role of the vice chancellor is to raise funds for the university. Then the question comes, how are you going to raise funds uh, for a university that is not stable. That's an honest reality. There is no one who can be interested to come and invest yeah. to something that is not stable. So I so wish you are going to work together with the VC to make sure that uh, this university is being ranked under um, top 10 in Africa, top 5 in South Africa, top 20 in the world. We believe in you. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, there is a lot of prophecy about today's gathering. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed that you are wearing similar gowns, non fundis. <laughs> <laughs> And this we tell target president to go and is around 16 August. Because of time, uh, I'm very happy that we are only given two minutes. And if we may need it, in Anga, Nenseba, here's the Tibani saying when you need visitors, and if not, I'll call the police. Today marks a momentous occasion for our esteemed university. 
the inauguration of a new chancellor, a leader whose vision and passion will, of course, uh, shape the future of this institution and guide us towards even a greater height of excellence. As the leader of this union, Nehau, I stand before you with a profound sense of responsibility and pride ready to celebrate uh, this new chapter in our shared journey of knowledge, growth, and transformation. Uh, if there was a program director, I would say, program director, allow me, I, I think it's rich, uh, to express our heartfelt congratulations to the newly appointed Chancellor, Siti Unju Mamukoboto, Amba Ungemi Mpokoto Yagowitu. Your appointment is a testament for your exceptional abilities, unwavering dedication, and a proven commitment to the values that will make uh, this university an intellectual powerhouse. We have a full faith that under your leadership, Madam Chancellor, this university will continue to flourish as a beacon of knowledge, innovation, and inclusivity. As we celebrate this inauguration, ladies and gentlemen, it is essential to reflect on the profound impact of the university, or of what the university has had on our individuals and society at large. Universities are not just mere buildings. They are the heart and the source of progress that enlightened uh, and social transformation. It is within these hallowed walls that young minds are nurtured, ideas are sparked, and knowledge is cultivated and created for a greater height and more enlightened the world. When I'm about to finish, as members of Nehau, we have a unique responsibility to ensure that the voices of our colleagues and students are heard and respected. We are the advocates of the fairness and equity and justice. We are not apologetic, we are impatient to impartiality when it comes to the stakeholders of this institution. Therefore, we commit to work together with the new chancellor and the university administration to foster an environment that cherishes the diversity, encourages an open dialogue, and celebrate the freedom of thought rich in pursuit of excellence and academic freedom. Madam Chancellor, our university is a tapestry woven from the ideas, dreams, aspirations, and the hard work of countless individuals. Faculties who dedicate themselves to the pursuit of knowledge, staff who tirelessly support the academic mission so that we can realize our vision and mission, we pursue the excellence. Each one, Madam Chancellor, contribute to the fabric of this institution. Today, as Nehau and as workers of WSU, we reaffirm our commitment to the ideals of academic freedom, critical thinking, and pursuit of truth. Let us stand united, therefore, and face the challenges of our time. Challenges that demand collaboration, compassion, and unwavering dedication to the greater good. When I'm about to finish, <laughs> Program Director, allow me to just say these few words to these few important uh, bodies, let me not use the word stakeholders, bodies, to the students. We say, embrace this in history, for it is you who carries the torch to the progress and the future. Let your curiosity be your guide, and let your passion ignite the flames of positive change in the world. To the faculties, which in most of the time are most less recognized, we say, your role as mentors and educators is profound and far-reaching. Empower our students to become the problem solvers and leaders of tomorrow. Your dedication shapes lives and destinies. To the administration of this institution, as led by Professor Songa, 
we say lead with integrity, transparency, and commitment to the welfare of every member of this university community. Together, we shall overcome any obstacles that stands on our way. In conclusion, Madam Vice Chancellor and Madam Chancellor, we say you are holding the mangle of leadership for this institution, and we trust in your abilities and inspire, inspire us and lead us your journey will be guided by the dreams and ambitions of countless individuals, and your decision will impact generations to come and the responsibilities with humility, empathy, and vision. If program director, I said anything wrong when I stand here, know that it's Mr. Nizel Amzianda who said it. But if I said anything good, know that it's Nehao. I thank you. Uh, Chairperson of Council, Council, Leadership of the University, all dignitaries, student leadership, labor, uh, staff of the university, I'd like to, to greet you all. Uh, I won't be long, Reg. Although I feel like bureaucracy is at play here. But nevertheless, uh, I just want to pick a few points to say. Uh, Madam Chancellor, you come at a time where our country is grappling with gender-based violence. That is targeted at women and children. Madam Vice-Chancellor, our university is no exception from what has happened in Cape Town, from what is happening in UNISA, where women in leadership are under siege. Uh, Madam Vice-Chancellor came in and drove a strategy, progressive strategy, but she was under criticism and everything else that is there. But I was happy to hear that you are going to join forces with her. Because there's one thing I believe, I'll take it from you, to say a lot of communities are headed by women in our society. And those women are prayer warriors. And if you join forces together, you pray for this university together, you too shall prosper and you will leave, you will leave a very, very progressive legacy in this university. I want to thank you. Um, I wish to rise on the protocol that has been cited by the latter speakers and to say to the bishop, uh, uh, my name is Sandy Sawagwambongo. I am the institutional forum chairperson. We are invited into a prestige event of a former student former staff member of WSU in Zalelwane Asimtat and the WSU Chancellor. I wish to express that it is not a coincidence that this event is hosted in your hometown, Mtat. I also wish not to express that it is not a coincidence that is hosted during the month where we celebrate the success and the leadership of women. I also wish to indicate that the month of August takes us back to the greatest speech that was made by Martin Luther King that said, I have a dream. So I wish that on this month, all your dreams about WSU becomes a reality. I also wish to take you back to a month of August again and its significance to the invention of the Guinness Book World of Records. It was established on the month of August. So as you embark on your journey as the new chancellor, also make sure that you break all protocols so that your journey at WSU is written in those books of world record like your professional career has been. 
Now I wish to take away the stigma that says the people who only contribute to intellectual debates are researchers and academics. I want to locate my message of support to the public intellectualism and how your role in the business will contribute towards the success of this university. Of course, that will need me to bring a bit of a context because we are in the state of a higher education sector. There are discourses around higher education from a global state, also a domestic, a domestic state. One of which the issue of funding model becomes a problem in all universities. For the year of 2022, the public funding for students has been 48 billion rands. And in the year of 2023, it has declined by 10 billion to 38 billion rands. The implications of this are that many students will not afford fees to study in universities. As an entrepreneur, as a business person, your first focus point of control is to check how best you can assist the university to inject funds into, in order to improve its revenue. The second part is the issue of graduate debt. We know how it has forfeited many graduates from getting their certificates. And as such, there is a high rate of unemployment because they cannot get their certificates. This is a national challenge as well. It also speaks to WSU. Again, the point of interest from IF is to say, how best can we assist each other in making sure that we deal with this devil? The third point I wish to express is a point of governance. About six universities in South Africa, some of them have gone to administration because of poor leadership, governance. What is different than about WSU? We've got a role to make sure that the governance system and leadership system are in place to inspire confidence and trust among our stakeholders. Further on, the governance authority must be exercised in control of the strategic direction of the university. Then lastly, on the context, I wish to draw your attention again on the issue of stakeholders. It is your role to make sure that stakeholders are united. Stakeholders speak in one voice. And make sure that we acknowledge and appreciate the coexistence of different interests within the university. Now, Julius Nyerere, uh, during his tenure as the chancellor in the University of East of Africa in the 1960s, is very clear that to say the university has not been established for a prestigious purpose. It has been established to speak into the needs of the development of the society it lives in. One thing we should note about WSU is that it is situated in the rural heart of the province. It means that the context and the direction of WSU will not be the same as those universities that are privileged. The second advantage is that it gives us the first-hand experience of societal ills and challenges our societies and communities face. Universities like WSU hold a very strong point in the hearts and the mind of many people in the province. Therefore, this says this university will forever be a community university. It means that we have a responsibility of accommodating organic intellectualism, where people from different ages and genders come together to share ideas for the betterment of this university. And because of this role you are occupying, it then means that you are no longer having a responsibility for your own achievements. You have a responsibility of those that came before you. You also hold the hopes of those that are to come after you. Now, as I will be landing, <laughs> Now, as I will be landing, you might uh, forget everything I said today, but I wish to draw your attention to a very symbolic and powerful norm of our culture. 
every time you face a challenge, remember Lamdu Ekayeno Bizumafungash. There's a particular character at home which is Umafungash. Mafungash, eke Gumdi Kayel Fungangai, Kobi Kayala Babalwa, O Mafungash. Ulango Banguta to Bawa Banduan, Abati Kabe Funim Bil, Bayokala Guta to Bawin Bil. Mafungash remains the rock. Nenzi kaye kai. Mafunga she. Cities in those years ngam bika kaye kai. Upeti kaya ya bandu be kai. Abal shia kuye kwenzel bimingwe no ye kai zangi yenzek. Yenzek ngi ngaka mafunga she. So you are going to be expected to play a role kama mafunga she as a chancellor to WSU. Grace it with humility. We also wish to say uh, we acknowledge and appreciate the nomination by uh, the convocation as led by Dr. Mandashe to nominate your name and further appreciate council for electing you as led by Advocate Mugai uh, Tobi to be the Chancellor of University. Thank Just to take... Um a moment and acknowledge the presence of Professor Mosia, who is a, a current and interim vice chancellor and principal of University of Pretoria, who is here with us. Also acknowledge advocate Edward Lambani, the registrar of the University of Vienna. Acknowledge Dr. Derek Swemer the former registrar of that. Thank you. Uh, Madam Vice Chancellor, the Chair of Council, See Ziva, see convocations on Rabe, Kakulu, Kukubekwa, Kwako Upper, Chancellor Koboto, a student is a Chancellor, Yelich University. See Vuiswa, Kakulu, Kukonda, and Dogba, Ukakeshwe Upper, Ubulo Longwe, Apu Pekwe Upper, Wavut, Wausel Upper, Wa Amba, Waya Ezizwen, Futukewa Shosha, Upper. Sikbona getina si convocation jangom zekelo. Sikbona jangom zekelo we kalelo elenzwe Lake University. Ainge kuzwe la lapa South Africa pati zizwe ni. Si azinga kenga awe kuba ngomnye ofana na umpondo slangiwe abalolongwe Lake University osaziwa yo abanda ba pumiza andla me puma Lake University. Ubaga kwa koke jengo chancellor wa Walter Sulu University. Kusinika itemba kalek university. Kusinika ukinseka kukuba abandu abachonge lek university. Batinga kaku ushe ngayo. Bano tando ngayo. Baya funa uguza yama nisa ngayo. Sia vweke kukuba utate inga kaba yuba uzo wa chancellor lek university. Indeed, convocation, to convocation, you are an image of honor, you are an image of excellence, an epitome of integrity and respect, and your magnificent social standing stands above dispute, and that is what we think is critical for anybody who is a leader. Your personal historical struggles as a black woman, your movement from rags to riches and the leadership in business that you've demonstrated and the global footprint of your business demonstrates the fact of your leadership and the texture of your beliefs. Do merit this ceremonial and ambassadorial role of chancellor for which you have been chosen. We believe that your investiture marks an important era for some of the things that concern convocation at the center of which is both fundraising and helping clear the student and graduate debt. The chairperson of the IF has indicated the extent of the problem nationally, but this problem is also global in nature. 
nationally we're sitting at over 16.7 billion debt for graduates. We think that having people like you in this university will certainly get us out of this malaise. Convocation in connection to this working with the university has embarked on a graduate debt clearance project early this year in March and uh, it has succeeded to some extent with the help of the government of the Eastern Cape, the Premier, Premier Oscar Mabuyane, various sitters, businesses and philanthropic individuals, students, workers of WSU, management and council, and we should like to thank all of those individuals. These individuals and structures and bodies have helped us get off the ground, and we think that and we believe and hope that your appointment as Chancellor will open many doors and help us clear the debt. We find this quite relevant in terms of what the institution stands for as an African university with values of Ubuntu, an institution that wants to make an impact in society, and we think that making an impact in the way of fundraising to clear these debts is quite a critical thing because you hit two birds with one stone. On one hand, you enable the institution to increase its liquidity. On the other, you solve part of the social problem. So we look forward to interacting with you about this initiative and how it can be taken forward. Please receive our heartfelt congratulations. Um, must also acknowledge the presence of Nkosu Patagile Omisa, the presence of our former Dean of Faculty of Medicine, Professor Mazwai, the presence of Mr. Lukolo Hubushe, MD of ADAPT IT. Thank you. That being said, please allow me to say protocol observed. Incoming Chancellor, Ms. Nokulelego Gobod, I want to dedicate this congratulatory message to you. It is with profound pride and utmost honor that we come to, together today to extend heartfelt congratulations on your recent appointment as our esteemed chancellor. Your exemplary achievements, exceptional leadership, and unwavering commitment to excellence have rightly earned you this prestigious position. And we are genuinely delighted to have you at the helm of our esteemed institution. You did say and allude to the challenges faced by women and despite those, despite those challenges, we need to continue to forge ahead. Being a woman in South Africa is not a walk in the park. However, as we celebrate, celebrate Women's Month, we find renaissance with this year's theme which reads, accelerating socioeconomic opportunities for women's empowerment building back better for women's improved resilience. This theme has profound resonance with our celebrations today. Therefore, allow me to deconstruct this theme in the context of your life's journey, which stands as a testament to the principles it embodies. The first theme addresses the acceleration of socioeconomic opportunities. This aspect emphasizes the urgency to expedite the creation of opportunities, not only for women, but also for the youth, in this case, across various socioeconomic spheres. It acknowledges that despite progress, significant disparities in education, employment, entrepreneurship and access to economic resources persist for women and youth in South Africa. To underscore this challenge, your approach to life and attempts to uplift the socioeconomic opportunities for these advantaged members of the community, you addressed 
the issue of gender-based inequalities by intentionally choosing to hire second and third year students. And this underpins your desire for the acceleration of socioeconomic prospects, especially for the youth. The second theme speaks to women's empowerment. Your story epitomizes the essence of women's empowerment. Inspired by South Africa's first black chartered accountant, Professor Wiseman Nguhlu, you forged your path to become South Africa's black, first black female chartered accountant. This empowerment served as the impetus for your transformative initiatives, such as the Suizwe Nzaluba Board of Firm, where you promoted economic transformation and empowered women, as evidenced by the significant women ownership or equity within that organization. The third theme is about building back better. This theme acknowledges the impact of various obstacles and setbacks encountered by women and the youth. These challenges include gender-based violence, femicide, lack of funding resulting in lack of access to education, and high youth unemployment rates. Our nation is hemorrhaging, notably in the education sector, as evidenced by the increasingly prevalent student protests across higher education institutions. During this year's Youth Day, you observed that in order to effect change, it is imperative to cultivate, to cultivate a mindset among youth and the young people that encourages them to utilize their knowledge and talents to generate employment. The last theme relates to women's improved resilience. The theme recognizes that women encounter unique challenges and vulnerabilities, urging efforts to fortify their resilience. Your journey has been marked by numerous challenges, yet your tenacity and determination have brought you to this pinnacle, making you an exemplar of resilience, consistency, and success. As Vice Chancellor, I take immense pride in acknowledging your invaluable contributions to the sciences, business, and education sectors. Honorable Chancellor, your appointment comes at a pivotal moment as WSU undergoes transformative changes, rationalizing faculties, consolidating campuses in pursuit of excellence. We see your presence as heralding an era of progress, innovation, and inclusivity for WSU. Your extensive expertise and experience are poised to propel us to greater heights, empowering our students to embrace knowledge, research, and societal impact with renewed vigor. As we embark on this transformative journey together, let us celebrate this momentous occasion with open hearts and boundless enthusiasm. Given your leadership experience, we are confident that we will flourish as a hub of intellectual excellence and a catalyst for positive change in various communities we find ourselves in. Your visionary ideas will empower us to overcome challenges, embrace innovation, and foster a nurturing environment for personal and academic growth. Esteemed Chancellor, we welcome you warmly into our university family, where we will endeavor together to foster inclusivity, construct bridges of knowledge, and create a brighter future for generations to come. In closing, please accept our sincere and sincerest congratulations on your well-deserved appointment as our Chancellor. I believe that together, if we work closely, we can achieve as much as we wish for, and indeed leave a legacy we can, we can both be proud of. And I have no doubt that the council and the WSU community, including labor formations, staff, student leadership, will walk us with us through this journey of change and restoration of WSU pride. I thank you and I welcome you to WSU, Madam Chancellor.
Ewe, lento kakati into ya londo. Tinanto za zio aso tukanga ndo. Sitete ngondwe, sitibe kufanelu, sichokanyi, sitibe kumelu. Babi njalo, bunga yigulunga. Kako oko, kwa kala yigulunga. I will say all protocols observed. Um, it is a singular honor for me to be in this august occasion today. And uh, I wish to just reflect the context in which this achievement was attained. And I'll start by quoting a young African woman poet in the US who writes in a poem, The Hill We Climb, when she says, we lay down our arms so we can reach out our arms to one another. We seek harm to none and harmony for all. Let the globe, if nothing else, say this is true. That even as we grieved, we grew. That even as we had, we hoped. That even as we tired, we tried. That will forever be tied together, victorious. That's Amanda Gorman. In 1987, we gathered in Bramfontein at the Proti Hotel as young women and men to launch the first student chapter of APASA. The news of your qualifying as a chartered accountant inspired us, boldened us to carry that dream forward. The story of women in our profession at least takes 23 years in this country from 1894 to 1917 when the first woman became a chartered accountant, Ms. Elizabeth Kruger. So to understand this achievement, we need to go back in history and see the impact women have had and the position in which women have been put. In 1895, in the United Kingdom, a magazine called The Women's Signal quoted Miss Mary H. Smith, saying, require of me what you require of a man. I will fulfill it, unquote. Despite that bold assertion in a male-dominated profession, it took 33 years from 1887 to 1920 when she was admitted as a member of the profession at age 75. This being a women's month, I also want to point out that it took women to change the complexion of our profession. A young black Jamaican called Lancelot Reynolds left the Caribbean to join a company that was a white-only company in the UK in 1956. As the only black man that was applying at the time to join that firm, all the partners and employees had to vote whether he is admitted or not. All men in that company voted against him admitted. All women in that company voted for him to be admitted, and that's how he became a chartered accountant. So as we understand and appreciate your achievement, we should also remember the impact you've had here at home in Abasa and in inspiring the African women chartered accountants to organize themselves 21 years ago. And I'm mentioning these things to under, so that we can understand the challenges and the obstacles and the battles that you've had to wage to get here. So as I prepare to sit down, Amanda Gorman again graced Joe Biden's inauguration with a poem and towards the end of this poem, he says, we will rise from the sun-baked south, we will rebuild, reconcile, 
and recover in every known nook of our nation. In every corner called our country, our people diverse and beautiful will emerge battered and beautiful. When day comes, we step out the shade, aflame and unafraid. The new dawn blooms as we free it, for there is always light. If only we are brave enough to see it, if only we are brave enough to be it. We are grateful that you were brave enough not only to see that light, but to see yourself as that light. Because as the CEO of the, Chartered, of the South African Institute of Chartered Accountants, I can say boldly that today we qualify more than 60% Chartered Accountants being those from the disadvantaged communities. <clears throat> that today we qualify more female African chartered accountants than we do male. And it is in no less measure due to your inspiration and your impact. We thank you and congratulate you on your journey. Thank you. I'm born in corner who speak our parliament. Again, my flight arrangements in South Carolina, U deputy, U DG, um, to come and give congratulatory message before Professor Ngul. DG. Good afternoon, all protocols observed. You know when you're called DG, you know someone has forgotten your name. <laughs> My name is Masya Sotikwa. I'm the Deputy Director General for the University of Education in the Department of Higher Education and Training. Program Director, let me start off by saying that Minister was looking forward to joining all of you to this auspicious occasion and sharing this historical moment with you, your family, the entire Walter Sisulu University community, and South Africa at large. But due to other pressing engagements, he unfortunately could not attend. But I'm in the company of very strong men. The first being the advisor in the minister's office, Mr. Ngamba Nadella. And Honorable Litsie, I'm trying to see where you are. Please, yes, I hope they all see you from the Portfolio Committee, Member of Parliament. Without him, ladies and gentlemen, there would be no budget for this university. And I must correct, I must correct the uh, misalignment of budgets statements earlier in speeches delivered this morning. Uh, it is not 39 billion. It is 44 billion in the previous year, financial year, 47 billion this financial year, 51 billion next financial year. And you add that to what is given to universities in equal measures, it's over 116 billion that we give over a three-year period to universities. <laughs> so let me turn to my speech. I had to correct those few facts. We'd like to truly thank the Council of Walter Sisulu University for extending invitation to the special occasion of the installation of Ms. Nongkululeko Gobodo as Chancellor of the University. Clearly a well-accomplished woman in the month of August, the month for women. Happy Women's Month to you all, by the way. Walter Sisulu University is indeed the home of several, several 
countless inspirational leaders. Please allow me just to mention them, just to remind you one more time that you sit in the company of very great people here. Students, you have so many inspirational leaders before you. You are so fortunate. Judge Mbuisile Madlanga of the Constitutional Court, Judge Mandisa Maya of the Constitutional Court, first female Deputy Chief Justice, by the way. The former Auditor General, and in fact, memory serves me well, first black Auditor General, Terence Ngedisi Nombebe. <laughs> See, Wusu delivers first. Advocate, uh, before I go, uh, Dr. Ngumisa Jilata, who at 29 years is the youngest neurosurgeon in South Africa. All these notable persons commenced with their studies here. I think we have all spoken to the credentials of our new chairperson. But I must say, I think the one we should acknowledge is her excellent job as a mother in delivering her children here today. She's clearly a mentor in many ways, and it is clear that her children have followed her footsteps. They go where many fear to trade. I believe it was a stroke of junior, genius for this university to select the chancellor seated here before us. Her accomplishments locally and nationally and her credentials make her a perfect fit for the role she's assuming today. No doubt, her appointment as the chancellor of this wonderful university presents enormous, enormous opportunities for this institution to tap into the networks for resources to contribute towards building a sterling future which must be felt and experienced by every student present here. <coughs> chancellor Gobodo, by returning to I'll say Wusu for short. You do not only inspire millions of women and chartered accountants, you are truly an inspiration to Wusu students, to graduates who view you as an example of those who prevail and make significant contributions to society, regardless of their location or address. Both departments of higher education and training and science innovation and the minister wish you the greatest of success in your appointment. And we are looking forward to your continued contribution to the development of this promising institution. I think many have tried to explain your role. I'll sum it up as follows. You are a titular head of an institution, and this requires you to preside over all congregations, confer all degrees, and award all diplomas and certificates at graduations. The chancellor provides leadership to the university, but is free of the burden of executive powers. I stress that as a chancellor, you're an ambassador advocating to raise WUSU's profile, advancing, advancing its interests nationally and regionally and internationally. As the university's titular head, you have an important ambassadorial role for the university. Working with a vice chancellor and the council chairperson and council to represent the university in the external community. You are also the co-fundraiser with a VC to ensure a third string income and that reserves, and I want to stress that, reserves are built to support longevity of this promising institution. 
It is by no accident that MIT in the US is sitting with reserves way over 34 billion because it has a plan to educate for the future. Madam Chancellor, Walter Sisulu University enrolls over 30,000 students annually. We therefore must not underestimate the significance of the social and economic impact this university plays in this community and the country at large. We know that education provides the means for many in our rural communities to escape poverty. The department recognized the gap, especially gender-based poverty. And male and female postgraduates have different privileges in universities. We want to close that gap. We've introduced one program called the Next Generation Academic Program, in short, NGAP. Allow me to promote NGAP. And I'll, you'll understand in a few minutes why I'm doing so. The NGAP targets previously disadvantaged groups, especially black women. It comprises a three-year development program to acquire a PhD, an additional three years in any academic position. The department spends 2.5 million per participant to ensure maximum support is given to that participant to succeed. There's a young lady here at Wusu who recently graduated with a PhD in accounting sciences. Her name is Dr. Nomanyo Manyaka Rulwa, a beneficiary of the NGAP, she had this to say once she had completed. All my personal and professional development needs were taken care of. I attended and presented in international and national conferences. I am now a transformed individual compared to when I joined the program, especially with regard to my academic profile and understanding the tertiary education space. Close quote. The department is seeking to ensure that the number of doctoral graduates, such as Dr. Manyaka Rulwa, grows in multiples. So, in 2012, only 1,879 doctoral graduates entered our systems. By 2021, we had doubled that number to 3,574. It is noteworthy, Chancellor, that 1,643 out of the 3,574 were women doctoral graduates. Our goal is to target 5,000 doctoral graduates per year until 2030. That is Minister's KPI, it is also yours. 5,000 doctoral graduates. We are appealing to you, and I say this most earnestly, to call others to advance their studies and skills. Walter Susula in particular has to attend to its doctoral degree throughputs. It can do better. I don't want to tell you what your stats are, but you can do better. I know you can, and I know you can because in 2021, 49 females acquired their master's degree here at Walter Susulu University, 49. They must be invited back to do their doctoral degrees, Madam Chancellor. If need be, Madam Chancellor, I will do my second doctorate with them right here at Walter Sisulu University. 
We want to show all of you it can be done. Recent studies concluded by the Department of Science, in short, we call it DSI, but Innovation and Technology, have shown that those who do their PhD have a 98% chance of being employed. 98%. I think you'll agree with me if we were to follow Benjamin Franklin's old adage, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. If you are still hesitant about doing your doctoral degree with Walter Susulu University, think of those before us who were emancipated from poverty through education and with the words of Horace Mann, who declared that education then, that is yesterday, beyond all devices of human origin, is the great equalizer of the conditions of men and women, the balance wheel of the social machinery. Do not forget that it is only in 1800s that women were allowed into university chambers. They came in numbers, and the numbers are only moving one way up. Be part of that number. Walter Sisulu University has immeasurable potential, and you can only see it when you look around this room. To surpass the Ivy League universities, our minister declared that he expects Walter Sisulu University to define its inherent advantages, the opportunities it can explore, and the needs it can serve, the areas it can lead over the next decade and beyond. Walter Sisulu University must not seek to be like any other that we have in our country. It must craft its own trajectory and its own unique identity and history. As government, we remain committed to the cause of supporting our institutions to achieve their mission. Hence our investments through the public purse, directed to infrastructure development, to ensure conducive learning spaces. You will recall that 21 April 2023, Minister addressed the same audience on the occasion of the official opening of the new and renovated buildings here at the Mtata campus. We are pleased that the refurbished halls are now fitted with ultra-modern technologies to enhance teaching and learning experiences of all students, including students who are living with disabilities. We need to fast track the use of technology to develop smart campuses. And I could not but note all the former Talco CEOs sitting in this room. You have no excuse, Walter Sisulu University. Yes, you have started, transitioned to um, smart boards. We want to see more. When we departed with the minister on 20. 1 April, we were filled with hope that the university has reset itself, Chancellor, stabilized and focused. We felt relieved at its difficult past, which seemed to have overwhelmed it, has receded. A past where it operated on a council-approved deficit for over five years and funds had been mismanaged until the university was placed under administration several times. So, Chancellor, you have arrived at the right time. A time when Wusu is on a positive trajectory, moving one way up. It would be remiss of me Chancellor, through the department, not to comment on the corrupt elements who are distracting our universities from their core mandate. Since 2000, 16 independent assessors reports have been compiled in response to government failures across the universities. Constantly, work is underway to advance the establishment of ombudsmen at every university to ensure 
that the early warning systems of governance failures are detected and addressed as quickly as they arise. Secondly, it is disconcerting that the number of reports of violence have increased. Our campuses are becoming unsafe for women. Sadly, reports suggest that 10% of all reported rape cases come from our sector. That's an indictment. We require a multifaceted approach to deal with the various factors which enable and exacerbate gender-based violence at our higher education institutions. We must, must dedicate more of our efforts towards working with men, with our young boys, to address aggression towards women and all other stereotypes. If we want women in this country, in this continent to advance socially and economically, when men recognize women are indispensable partners in the economy and social fabric, so much more becomes possible through collective development. So much more. Furthermore, tendencies to use arson and destruction of university property are less than progressive, particularly, and I want to say that because we are looking at Walter Sassoli University very carefully, you are the second highest beneficiary. In other words, we give you, when we allocate funds, second highest is allocated to Walter Sassoli University. As I conclude, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take this opportunity once again and on behalf of the department and all my colleagues to extend our sincerest felicitations on your appointment, which we believe is no accident in history, because I'm absolutely confident, especially after hearing you today, that you mean business. You are not here to play, not with anyone, you are focused on the vision of this university. We wish you the greatest success and fulfillment in your appointment, and we look forward to your contributions. Walter Susulu University is indeed lucky. I thank you. Um, Deputy Chair of our Council happened to have an emergency. Councillor Vuyana Jahana will take the responsibility. Number two, after Mr. Jahana, MEC Education Honorable Gada, you will follow him. We will close by the presence of Professor Nkutlu, our maker, as a last speaker. Uh, thank you, Raj. I am going to read the message as written by the Deputy Chair of Council, without wasting time, the Chair always tells us that we must be combat ready, so I'm going to do my best. Firstly, it gives me ple great pleasure to extend Council's warmest congratulations to you on your appointment as a Chancellor of the Walter Sisulu University. Council trusts that your appointment will contribute immensely and lead the institution towards its vision of being an impactful, responsible, that is responsive and delivering future-ready graduates. The significance of your inauguration during the Women's Month is ostensible as it serves as an inspiration to all who wish to take on leadership roles and make an impactful difference. Council acknowledges the extensive experience and skills you bring to the institution and believes that uh, your wisdom is valuable towards the vision and visage and will contribute immensely to elevating the Walter Sisulu University to even greater heights. As you embark upon your new role, Council assures you that the university stakeholders, the university stakeholders of the, the as you embark on, a new, on your new role, the Council assures you and the university stakeholders of the commitment uh, to the university's mission to respond to societal needs in an ethical and sustainable manner. 
the university community is looking forward to working with you for the benefit of country's citizens and globally beyond the South African borders. Congratulations on your appointment and Council wishes you every success in your leadership of the university. May your tenure be successful and rewarding. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chairperson of the Council. Your established protocol is uh, observed. Um, as I was listening uh, from one speaker to another, uh, making res uh, reflections, I came to a conclusion, Chancellor, that indeed freedom is forever incomplete. One of the issues that uh, informs my thinking, which I will just reflect on and uh, leave the stage so that I don't consume much of your time. The elephant in the room, uh, Chancellor, that needed to be dealt with um, is the collapse of the social infrastructure in the country. And I could, I could make an observation that many of us want to deal with the manifestations and not the actual causes of this crisis that we're confronted with. Whether you look in terms of the ecosystem of governance that we are engaged on, whether you look in terms of the eradication of the work ethics within the public service itself, whether you look in terms of the values expected in some of the institutions that um, we take them with high regard, churches, for example, this question arises. And it constrains uh, any form of government in achieving the targets that it sets for itself. And it constrains the capacity of the state intellectually to resolve the unresolved issues. And the Songanake Okoti Bishop, Saumbi Inaki, Kwese Amans, Kwanyuka in Cheng. Saumbi Naki, Kwese Amans, Kwanyuka in Cheng. Because critical to how we deal with the issues of leadership at the level of the institutions that we lead requires a stature and a caliber of personnel that befits the office itself. And I'm proud today that we are indeed, Chancellor, directly and indirectly the products of this institution. And it has created a bit of a leverage for the state in the form of the Eastern Cape government, at least to climb the ladder of success in the recent years. About four months, if I'm not mistaken, VC, we were in East London in IC, at the heart of the discussion between myself and yours was whether there is any basic elements and components in the so-called basic education and, and debt that are so basic so that the learning process indeed can be a learning in the true sense of the word. And whether there is any African perspective 
in the schooling system and the education philosophy that we have adopted in the country? And can that instrument resolve the problems of the African people in the best interest of building a coherent society that we seek to build? And I'm therefore adding to the congratulatory messages that have been said here. One issue that I would want to lift for all of us to go back and see how to assist this collective leadership that we are going to lead, Chancellor and the Vice Chancellor. Pels has already indicated in the in their research and report of 2019 that the developed countries, I mean the developing countries are producing learners that are unable to read and write with comprehensive meaning. Now, this is in Musab. Pa, we foundation phase go to us produce abanda banga kwazi yo funda no pala now abenga kwazi funda no pala with meaning ipels report icho what kind of production must we then expect when they are here And what kind of production and expertise must we then expect when they are employed elsewhere? So, the Funake Sisonde Le Fuchane question does Ningak. Suzo Kwasi Ukunetisana in interpreting them. Again, a uh, Chancellor, high on the agenda now in the, in the discourse in, in basic education interestingly the president has made a proclamation on the sign language and when the president made that proclamation chairperson of the council I laughed I laughed because we have got a backlog of ideas We have been engaged on redefining the course of the African people within the country itself and answering the question, whether can you resolve the issues of the past of this country without the introduction of mother tongue bilingual education? Now, Kuvelangu is sign language as a constitutional matter, as I could be in a lay into. Now, the Afunake, VC, and the Vice Chancellor, and the Chairperson of the Council, because this is one of the institutions in this country that is rich in research. Yeah, Kekele Uba Kessinga Sebenzisi, as the universities we have, whilst they are regarded as the best universities in research in the country, almost four of them in this province. consultant, ube une arm research that Wusu has that can resolve some of the matters that we have. And I'm therefore saying it's gonna be critical that we look very closely on the developmental trajectory of the province. One, what is the perspective of this institution in dealing with the ocean's economy? As part of the pedestal that must enrich the province in, in responding to the provincial development plan. I'm raising this, Vice Chancellor, because Two weeks back, I was in Port St. John's. The Kaiser Longum Nutata, Pa, Oloba, a crayfish, I think Sele Umlungu, a Sekap, and the 70 Rand. 
yena lomlungu xa efika ithengise ka apha i 1000 rand now unetrakhi apha as never as ne fridges apha ngasemva in essence it means e colonization can change faces in various forms and shapes because as born in tifani kulende oba currently we were the champions for example of cannabis but today we are being lectured by cannabis by people who have never seen any form of cannabis by the way <laughs> now we must listen to them lecturing us on cannabis trying to dilute cannabis by hemp for one reason or another same thing that is happening on the oceans economy because we have got 800 km square of ocean in the province and the wealth of the country in terms of the projections of the research is in the oceans economy for the next 50 years to come and i'm therefore saying how do we then diversify the curriculum and alignment of content so that it responds to that question the unemployment rate of young people in the country and in the province is not an accident has been produced by system and that system must be unbundled so that you can be able to learn out of the miseries that we have been able that we have we have, we have, we have created collectively so directly and indirectly conscious and in unconscious so i'm saying this occasion is not just a ceremony but a beginning of a meeting of the minds from where from here where are we going and how do we reposition this province what are the strengths in terms of the economy of this province and what are the shortfalls and how do we augment and create a path that benefits all of the people of this province as i'm sitting down a uh, chairperson of the council one area which is a glaring one in the province which i must share with you sinengxaki yourself hate up a province before we are liberated as a province we need to liberate ourselves from ourselves sinengxaki yourself hate up iyakwazi kwenzeka into a wrong in one of the provinces and be acceptable but once yenzeke apha kube kwingxaki is multiply mhlawumbike i culture leya bekuthethwe ngayo qala apha bi culture yalapha this is a province originally a province which has got a history of struggles i don't want to say is a province of rebels <laughs> a province of rebels in the sense that it was not an accident that they fought more than 100 years for us to be where we are now that's characterize and indicate the character of the people of this province so xa bekuthuka ukwi position of authority funa kuyamkele lo nto ba sikufanele sisithuko from the hundred years back yobanga abantu aba intolerant ezinto ene zirongo but ndiyafuna ke into kuba nje ngembali e ritual ape province let's find a way to solve the ex for the governance of the province find a way to ensure that we utilize the capacity that we have in terms of the four institutions that we have we utilize the individual capabilities that we have because that's another elephant in the room here in the province sithatha ngento bana kukho umuntu uyaziyo into nobukhona pendlini ubandi mthandi ubandi mthandi ngicela lo ufunwa ngapha egautini azokwenza lento ihafu kule bendiza uyenza mna kuba xa isuke egautini 
okanye suka in another province so i'm saying there are issues that we need to deal with them that are systemic and structural that has got a potential to make us close shop before the generations to come to see the light of this province abantu bale bel pondo bazibophelele kule institution and i'm happy by some of the sentiments raised by the dg here one critical question that we must resolve is the issue of the allocations. And I'm happy that Wusu is the second highest allocated institution in the country. But isolating is Wusu outside of the broad fiscal policy of the province and of the country is a problem. Wait for December. They are is not here. They're not budgeted here. So I'm saying there must be a re-engineering, recessed methodology and philosophy on some of the policies that we have in government. Sisuka ne routine governance. Sikailu yens and golu show bolent. Nobody make us a chin, chai bonacalis, but eh, ah, man. There is something wrong here that needed to be engineered and, and turn things around for the, for the purpose of the people of, of this particular province. We welcome, our, we welcome the invitation, uh, Chairperson and the VC, and we are happy that we are part of uh, this. Um, gathering today, we commit as provincial government that will forever be indebted on the wisdom of this institution. It was never been called a uh, usu just for the sake. There was history involved on that. And ours is not to mourn, therefore, but reorganize ourselves and forge ahead with the mission and the targets of the institution that has been set before us. Thanks. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's the afternoon already. I just want to begin by saluting your new chancellor. There's nothing that is very special to me than to address her as Madam Chancellor Nongululeko Kobode, Chancellor of the Walter Sisulu University. Congratulations. <laughs> we have been on the same path for a long time, but I never imagined that it could happen, that she becomes the chancellor of this university, the way I was vice chancellor. I congratulate her and wish her the very best, that under her leadership, the university will continue to prosper as a center of academic excellence, as well as a center of institutional integrity. I have no doubt she is going to serve as a role model to all of us and is going to be a source of support and inspiration to the Vice Chancellor, to the, to, the, to the Chairman of Council, to the Council regarding how we should position ourselves to, be, to distinguish the University as a center of academic excellence as well as excellence in the way that it manages its affairs. I'm very pleased, although I have not had time to greet them, but to see Udadwa uh, Bapo, Ulinda, and see the children, uh, it is very special to me. Uh, it is really, I could not have missed this occasion for anything else. 
you know, it was very special when uh, at my young age as a newly qualified accountant, their father came to office and asked us to go and, and be the bookkeepers of, of her practice, of his practice. Their father was a, what I would call a serial entrepreneur. He's the kind of guy who would rise today and prosper, and tomorrow is bankrupt. <laughs> and as to start, you would think that this is the end of him. But in no time, he will conquer again and rise. So that's where she got that spirit from. from. So uh, we were very pleased. We had an excellent time in Umtata. We lived here at this university for 15 years. My wife was sitting at the back here. She had the privilege of interacting with many of you. Congratulations and best wishes, uh, Mam Tembo. My best wishes to the Vice Chancellor, to the Chairman of Council. Uh, but of course, coming here is very special to me. I cannot help just casting my mind back. When I received the invita invitation, I had this imagination of Nongkululeko wandering as, as a young girl. I think it was a panel beating business. Yeah. <laughs> there as a bookkeeper and all that. And now showing an interest, I'm sure the parents wanted her to be a doctor. Because during our days, if your daughter was very bright, you said this is going to be a medical doctor. But uh, unknowingly to the parents, she just likes seeing us as accountants coming in and out and asking questions from, the, from her and, 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 and the father and other managers of the business. She got interested. The rest is history. Unfortunately, I didn't have the privilege of teaching it directly. As she says, um, I taught in the very early years, and then there was Professor Ryan, but the person who really built the department and produced the chartered accountants that the Eastern Cape, especially Mutata, was able to produce was George Williams. Under him, I think during my time, I can only recall Terence Nombembe, Tomato, Serobe, and people like that were in my class, and it was a privilege to see them there. But in, in, in just understanding how special it is to be here today, I want just to go back and share with you the ideas and thoughts that were in our minds in 1977 when we came here to start the university. I had just recently qualified as a chartered accountant, and I wanted to do something that could show, I would say the white community in particular, white people, that uh, my passing the exams was not an accident. You can be black and numerate at the same time. This was not an accident that Africans can only talk. So you can also be numerate. So I grabbed the opportunity when it was decided to open a branch of the University of Forte in Umtata. I said, this is a, a one opportunity in a lifetime where as a young qualified chartered accountant, you have got an opportunity to establish a department and shape it in the way that you believe best in terms of being a center of inspiration to young Africans who aspire for greatness. That's the reason I came here. Coming here, I come across Chabane Manganya. Chabane was the first dean of the Faculty of Arts. I hope when we write about the history of this university, we'll remember it. The idea of converting, of subverting the, the, the agenda of an apartheid government, of a Bandestan government into what we did in actually reconstructing UNITRA, I attribute that to him. He's a guy who said, wise man, this is a unique opportunity. We have got something there that we can shape and be the center that will really give the kind of education 
that Africans deserve and show what they are capable of. Yes, the government had their own objectives, but through that, Shabane was able to recruit the Totemayas of this world that was a rebel in South Africa to become a head of political science, Herbert Villakazi, who became head of sociology, and many others. Of course, we stumbled in 1984 when the homeland authorities became very concerned about what was going on here. A number of them were deported. But I'm pleased to say that that spirit of Shabana Manganya never died. We who stayed behind, we said, this is going to be a center of excellence. We deliberately focused on professions because that's the area that I understood better. For me, I had to make sure that through the accounting department, we produce the second and the third African chartered accountant from this university. This is what happened. The whole of South Africa, there was one African chartered accountant when I came head of department here. That was the case up to 78, 79, 80. I trained those young men coming from Fort Hare. They wrote the board exams in 1980, 81. They passed and they become the second and the third. So the accountants in the country. So that focus on professionals, on developing professionals remained very much embedded in the Faculty of Economic Sciences. As you know, we had uh, Professor Wolfgang Thomas, who became head of economics. We had a young man, Iraj Abidin, who, is, who became famous subsequently. We got him to South Africa, and he was one of the gems that we had in the faculty. And then, of course, we had George Williams. We continued then and became a center of excellence in accounting. Our degrees recognized and accredited by the best universities in the country. We're very proud of that. Fortunately, later on, that was lost. We gave the same equal, same spirit of Manganya, really influenced our faculty of law. We attracted some of the best legal minds into that faculty. And through that, Selwyn Miller, Dick Bikoyana, Shope, and others, they trained and produced some of the best legal minds that have come to characterize and, um, our judiciary in this country. We're very proud of it. These things do, did not happen by accident. We, as the Africans, were privileged to be given this space to influence what can be done. We converted that space into a center of excellence. We had to deal from time to time with the reality of being in a homeland. Authorities being uh, panicking when they see students strike or things like that, and then, uh, of course, we'll be at the center of it. But we have to intervene and make sure that uh, we deal with those matters with maturity, integrity, and of course, we're not putting further, I in Dingu Komna, respect me, because I was the head of the university, respect me. I would come to this wall to engage Nehau, to engage the students as wise men, Lomkil and Kushu, not as a former Robben Island prisoner. But I wouldn't be going there. I would say, take me at what you see. Judge what I'm sharing with you. Whether you, have, you trust my words, that, that really what I'm telling you is the truth, is up to you. I'm pleased that we had an excellent relationship. I was pleased to hear the head of, uh, the, of Nehau's secretary making the remarks here, because we were proud at the time. Actually, when, when, it, when it did it, we were not even aware that we were the first university in South Africa to give recognition to Nehau. It came naturally to us. We were the first university before all these historically white universities. It came naturally. It was a natural thing. It was our own African people, you know, leading that, that organization. Of course, as you know, we have also had the excellent work in the Faculty of Medicine. The university was privileged to have um, Professor Klaba Mokwena, who was later joined by Dan Ngayane, Lizo Mazwai, and others. Again, they produced an excellent institution which became a model for how to train doctors for the conditions in which we operate. This was true also for education. We did education, we deliberately focused on producing 
teachers, on producing accountants, on producing lawyers, and of course, uh, doctors and, and nurses. And we did a very good job of that, and we're very proud of that. So my point, therefore, Madam Chancellor, is that if it was possible to have to make the impact that we had under those difficult conditions, knowing that the objectives of the authorities establishing university were different, but we managed to reshape those to produce the kind of re result we served. If you doubt it, look at the justices of the, of the, of the Constitutional Court. Look at the justices in the high courts and see the products of this university. You can look at the Auditor General of the second Auditor General of, this, of the country came from, from this university as it has been. So if it was possible to do that, I think now Walter Cecil University is an is even better place to achieve even greater heights. Nongulako, <laughs> your life is really serves as a good example of tenacity, commitment to excellence, and to goals, and never giving up. And uh, reference was made to your role in establishing the biggest black uh, audit firm in South Africa. You had that vision. You stumbled a number of times. You even left the profession without, without, have, without accomplishing that goal. But the great thing, because that was always your aspiration, you came back to say, I, this unfinished work. Went back and finished. You are inspiration to many, not only black women, to lots of professionals. Uh, my plea, Chairman of Council, is that um, when I have got occasions like this, I keep asking ourselves, if I talk about this wise man Kutu, who's chartered accountant, who has created this expression, non Echo, and talk about these justices of the Supreme Court and these great Africans who have achieved those things, why in Africa and this country we still have 56% of our people in poverty? Why is it that we cannot run simple things like a department of education? <laughs> we have to ask this question seriously, but my answer towards that, much as we have achieved excellence as individuals, but as a community or as Africans, we still yet to achieve that. Let's see how we move towards that. Firstly, I think the first step is that we must just appreciate that this, everything, uh, cathedrals, whatever is great, you build it step by step, brick by brick. I think we've done well now. We have an excellent chairman of council, excellent um, vice, uh, vice chancellor, and now we have got your chancellor. I take it that excellence spreads to the heads of departments, the professors, and so on. So it's, it's very important that when we are given these opportunities to lead institutions, to lead a department, whatever, you take it as your personal responsibility to work and build and perform at the highest standards of excellence, of performance, of integrity. Don't blame the environment because you'll never be able to accept responsibility. You must accept personal responsibility. So I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased that this university then is privileged to have you as leaders. I have no doubt it's well positioned to be an institution of academic excellence, an institution of excellence in managing its affairs. And this is how we're going to rebuild this country. We'll have to identify some of our best people who have distinguished themselves in terms of competence, in terms of integrity, in terms of their performance to actually lead those. And when they do so, they mustn't only talk excellence, they mustn't only talk integrity, they mustn't only condemn corruption. 
it must be seen in how they conduct themselves. You must model the aspirations, the principles, the values that you talk about. People must not just listen to you, they must see how you conduct yourself. This is the test, this is the test. We're all good now, especially as academics, to talk about these things right at length about them. But what has, is still missing is that taking personal responsibility and accountability each one. And I think now that you have the role models leading this institution, you're in a better, you're better positioned to, uh, to do that. Therefore, I am greatly honored and privileged and very happy to be here today to see the university making this big, taking this big step forward. I have no doubt you are going to make, <coughs> you are going to be a great success. You are going to grow from strength, from strength to strength. And you remember, the reason, just one last link. Yeah, this thing is heavy on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, possibly I, I know that I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to be too serious when I talk because I'm serious. Why I'm serious is because we as Africans, we are undermined, despised for centuries. We're enslaved. We're victims of racism. We're seen as inferior and that incapable of governing ourselves and achieving the greatness that other nations have achieved. Here's our opportunity. We're free. Don't try to have excuses about the Constitution and so on. There's enough space here for us to really do things differently. If Bando education disadvantages our people, why do we continue with Bando education today? Unless we talk clearly about these things and improve the curriculum of our schools at big school and do away with math literacy and give quality education and make sure that a child, when he finishes grade 12, you are qualified for something. Either you can repair computers or you can be a plumber or you can be an electrician. We can't spend all those years, you finish 12 years, you don't have qualification to go to university and you have no qualification to do nothing. This is what continuing with apathy education, boundary education, if we do that. This is the revolution that must take place here. If we are going to, we as the educated people who are sitting here today, the fate, the future of our country is in our hands. It depends on us what to do with the opportunities. Madam Chancellor, we have served as role models, we keep on talking about these things, but in the spaces that we're privileged to serve in, let's make it happen. Let's not talk about the right things, let's do the right things properly. Thank you very much, congratulations. The Vice the Deputy Vice Chancellor will come and give vote of thanks. Let me just make a short um, announcement because we have been here for some time. Um, immediately, DVC and Chancellor, um, having done to perform their part. The Chancellor's procession on stage will be the first to leave the auditorium and will be followed by the academic procession and everyone will follow up there to our reception lunch. DVC. Olwen, I know I'm standing between your lunch, so I will try my best to just give a vote of thanks. 
On behalf of the Chairperson of Council, Advocate Ngokai Tobi, and the Vice Chancellor and Principal of Walter Sisulu University, Professor Rushila Sonya, it is indeed an honor for me to give a vote of thanks. I would like to thank the DDG of Higher Education, Science and Innovation, Dr. Mashia Sotikwa, who has just left, and the department, the delegation from the ministry, led by the advisor to the minister. Also want to thank His Royal Highness, King Damase Kandamase. Also thank Nkosikazi, Nosizwe, Nolindisiso, Mtirara, and all the traditional leaders present, and Olomis, Pateka Olomis. I'm surprised people are laughing. Have I misinterpreted? Oh, I'm sorry. I read it in Chivenda, so understand. To the Deputy Speaker of the Eastern Cape Provincial Legislature, Honorable Koboshian, we thank you. The MEC for Education in the Eastern Cape, Honorable Mr. Gard, the Executive Mayor of OR Tambo District Municipality Councillor, Gong Ndwana, to the Executive Mayor of King Sabata Dalindebo, Councillor Nelani, and to all captains of industry and CEOs, we want to thank you. We know you are very busy people, but you took time out of your schedule to come and be with us. We want to, count, to thank the Council of the University. I, I think you need to give them a round of applause. They are almost all of them here. And also led by the chairperson of council, of course. Walter Sisulu convocation as well. They are here, we thank you. Our management team of the university, led by Professor Rushila Songa, and labor representatives, as well as the ISRC, and all staff members and students of WSU. We thank you. It's a Saturday today, but look at you. You are here. Honored guests, Professor Nkutlu, Professor Musia, the VC, acting VC of University of Pretoria, the CEO of SAICA, who even gave us the history, Justice of Constitutional Court, Justice Madranga, Dr. Swema, Advocate Rambani, Baba Rumiri Seva Chumelahayan, Advocate uh, Professor Mazai, we really want to thank you very much for honoring our invitation. Some of you even participated in the program. To our bishop, we thank you for serving us with that milk that you reminded that we should not drink alone, but share. To the chairperson of council, we are really honored to have a leader of your caliber. You reminded us of who our chancellor is. And Professor Songa, thank you for your leadership for being a fearless woman and bold. And look at you, someone fearless as you are has joined. To the Chancellor, Madam Chancellor, you are actually a role model to many of us. And as the chairperson said, you are indeed a, tra a trail blazer. You never allowed any situation, any stumbling block to block you. And this is who you are. You have broken all this, the stereotypes about women, about blacks, and you, 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 you were able to go against all the odds. And here you are, you are rep representing us women in August. Thank you for your humility. Thank you for being a servant. Thank you for accepting this nomination because that goes with a lot of responsibility. And I'm sure you heard congratulatory messages from different speakers already giving you a job that you know and I want to thank all of them who spoke on behalf uh, uh, of all the different organizations giving congratulatory messages. I don't want to read each one by name because we don't have much time. I also want to thank friends of WSU, funders, our donors, who also donated for this event. We appreciate you. We also want to thank the praise singer, Imbongi. We thank you. To our choir, Africa sings when Africa is celebrating, and you really helped us to celebrate. To our sign language interpreter, thank you very much for availing yourself. 
organizers of this event, organizers of this event, registrar and his team, MCA, MC and his team, photographers, IT, those working behind scenes, the security team, facility, cleaning, ushers, all those we've also provided us with nourishment. Thank you. I want to specifically thank the family of our chancellor, Ms. Nongkululeko Gobodo. We thank you for allowing her this opportunity that we share her with you. Because that means you are not selfish. You would say, hey, ma, when, when will we get the time to be with you? Hey, granny, what, what, you know, where will you be? We can't make an appointment to meet you because you are so busy. But yes, you allowed that chance for your grandma, for your mother to work with us. On that note, we thank you. They say it takes a village to raise a child. The community that supported her to be where she is today, we really want to thank you. To all of you, Thank you. This is our good national anthem and pagan, of course. By the virtue of the powers vested in me, I declare the Chancellor Inauguration Ceremony closed. Oh. 